Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this episode we are going to be unboxing this ISDT Q6 Nano LiPo, Li, I, H, V, etc, etc battery charger. Now I know many of you are on a short time and you just want to know is it any good or not Matt? And the answer to that is yes, it's absolutely fantastic. I've been using it here in my workshop uh, for the last week or more uh, alongside the original battery charger uh, which from also from ISDT which has been absolutely fantastic. Now to bring you up to speed very very quickly you can't get this charger anymore and I've had this one for about two years so I am personally super happy with the brand ISDT. So when I saw the them come out with the brand new Q6 Nano Smart Charger and it having a wide range of options, I went to Banggood and asked specifically for this charger to review it. And the only one minor complaint which I've got, and it's really just down to my experience with using it, because to be honest I still struggle with the scroll pushy will on this one, uh, is the button. Okay. Okay, is that it's just going through the different modes like so uh, I, I'm too cumbersome and sometimes I hit the wrong selection okay that's the only bad thing which I can say about this charger I have used it for lipo batteries I've used it with lion cells normal low pies LIHV uh, and it has been absolutely fantastic and like I said I've had it here for over a week now and it's been absolutely brilliant so there's the short summary of the Q6 Nano charger from ISDT. It is a thumbs up from Matt. It's been absolutely brilliant. Now, the other reason why I asked for this charger specifically is because it comes with a wide range of options for you. Not only does it come with different mains chargers, uh, so if it doesn't matter if in Europe, the UK, or the US, maybe you want a balance board or some other accessory, what I'm gonna do is put a link in the video description for you which will take you across to the Banggood website and it will not only have the charger just by itself, which by the way is the cheapest option and that is the option which I would personally go for a uh, second time around because I just need the charger itself and I've got balance boards, etc., etc. However, I do appreciate that some of you don't have balance boards where you might wanna charge up many, or take these for example, I've got three of these for a multi-rotor, is that I could charge up all three of them at the same time with one charger using the balance board. With all of that out of the way, let's go and unbox this one and take a first look. I'll explain that in more detail, but the short summary, thumbs up, was impressed. Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this episode we are going to be taking a look at the ISDT Q6 Nano Smart Charger. Just want to give you like the heads up, I actually contacted Banggood and asked for this charger specifically because it's brand new also, it's from a brand which I've used myself for the past two years or more. Uh, there's a previous version, this one is the SC608 150 watt charger. I use this almost every single time I go out flying and it's an absolutely invaluable tool, but you can't get that one anymore. So when I saw this small version and it was a 200 watt up to 8 amp version appear on Banggood, literally got in contact and say can we have a look at one because I've been super impressed with the previous version uh, and it has been absolutely fantastic. I genuinely mean it every single time which I go flying is that I've always got that one there in my flight bag. It's just one of those invaluable tools that we can get in here uh, to have with you. So first impressions, this is a similar size charger, just going for the size on the desk. Each one of these cells are 10 centimeters, uh, or 10 millimeters, should I say, not 10 centimeters. So we're five, six. We're about 70 millimeters square uh, by approximately 30 millimeters deep. So this really doesn't matter if you've got a great big uh, a flight bag or you're, you're taking your car or a tiny little backpack you could sneak this in there quite easily so let's get the film off which I think I just peeled that the wrong way hey ho to be honest I left the film I think the film's still on the top of my original one uh, just having a quick walk around we have uh, our let me just get this right so I believe that's power in no, power in is on the left hand side of the device. We've got a USB connection as well. Uh, we've got an up and down button and push button on the top. So yeah, DC in on the left. Uh, looks like we can connect this to a computer later on if we see fit or maybe there's a firmware upgrade or some other options which we could potentially change. We've got our battery and this charger will charge anything from two to six S. 
Now, the other reason why I chose this charger, not only because of its size and because I knew the brand, but also there are eight variations of this charger, not, not necessarily this charger itself, but eight variations for different power supplies, balance boards and things like that, accessories which would get you started very, very quickly. For me, the naked charger is perfectly fine, but I do appreciate some of you may want the balance boards and things like that so you can be, perhaps be charging multiple batteries at the same time. Uh, I've probably put a screenshot of what that is up on your screen. That's but that's not important for me because I'm normally only charging one battery at the time. Yeah, input, input voltage, so DC 10 volts to 30 volts. So in other words, you would likely to be using 3S and higher. Max input current, nine amps. Max output current is eight amps. And max power is 200 watts, made in China, etc., etc. Does look like it does have a discharge function just by there being a fan on the back. So those of you wanted to put your battery into storage charge, that looks like a possibility. And with that said, let's go and plug this in. So I'm just using a great big Lion pack, as I normally do uh, here on the side, uh, to, to power the charger. Uh, so first screen we can see, looks like we've got current setting, the amount put back in the battery, uh, and then we can see the power of the cells. Now obviously we need to connect a battery to that, so we can see what the current condition of a battery is. So let's just go and plug this one in, so let's connect that one up. Right, it's immediately recognised that it's 12.3, let's put these in, so it's always fun, you never know which, which way, there we go, right, so I've been in connected up a 3S LiPo battery and we can see that the cell counts are 3.13 uh, and one of them is slightly lower than the other, let's press the down button and see what we've got, right, okay, so this battery is actually a 4000 mAh battery, so can I click on there, oh, there we go, this is going to take a little bit of getting used to. Can you see it's got some quick options in there? That's quite nice. Now, mine's 4,000, so... Looks like I'm just gonna have to press it repetitively to get down to the bottom. So 4,000. Click, choose. It's already detected that it's a 3S. Now, let's just say it was a different battery type, the different, different chemistry. If we go in there, it's one of those there we go. Right, that's happy days. Let's just quickly run down these options. You really cannot see those options, so let's zoom right in so you can see them properly. My, my apologies. There we go. Now you will notice that there might be some horizontal lines uh, on your screen, uh, on, on the video footage. Just be aware that's only coming out on the difference between the uh, refresh rate on the LCD and the camera which we're recording this on. Right, with that out of the way, we can do LIHV, which is really handy because that battery to the right is LIHV. Let's go back up, and like I was saying, it's gonna be one of those you just get used to, uh, and you'll soon be whizzing around the, 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 the menus. So LIHV, which is that, ironically, the battery which I'm using. LiPo, Lion, uh, which is Happy Days. Lifey, which is also Happy Days because my transmitter pack uh, for my Tyrannus is a uh, Lifey battery. We also have PB, which is lead acid, and we also have nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium. So I'm ironically going to set mine to the correct. Uh, well, actually, I'm just going to leave it on LiPo if I'm honest. Uh, we'll leave that on LiPo. Now, task, we can change that from charge. Ah, look. Discharge, that's why we had the air vents on the front and the fan on the back, is because we can, whoa, that one sounds really harsh. I better go and check the manual on that one, uh, just to <laughs> destroy. Uh, I presume that would literally just run the battery into the ground. Uh, that is a curious one. Uh, and let's go back and choose. So 99% of the time, let's be honest, you're just gonna have that on charge. Uh, you can set your uh, battery into a storage charge as well. That What that means is that underneath here, inside of this charger unit, we will have a resistor and the fan, and that's how, we, uh, that's how we're discharging the battery. Uh, and once it gets to a predefined voltage, then it will discharge it for, and it's discharged back to a safe level for the given type of battery. Uh, I want mine sat on charge, and then we go down. We could change the cell count if we wanted to. Let's go and click start, and we're away. Now I can hear, and you might be able to hear, it's very quiet. 
there is a little fan on the back and we can hear it uh, whirring away there in the background. Now, let me just quickly go through this display for you. This bar at the top is the best indicator and you can tell that I've owned these, this, this charger before, a similar screen charger before, because that there is the best indication on where this charger is within its charging cycle. And you can see the cells are almost bumped up straight away. We can see the time which the charger has been on, the amount of current which is being put in to the actual uh, LiPo battery pack, the amount of mini amperes which have also been put in there as well, uh, and we can see the voltages of the different cells. Now, if we push the down button, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a very good idea on the internal resistance of each of the cells. A feature which I've actually found super handy while making my own LiPo, uh, sorry, Lion cell packs, is that what I would do is that I'll put them together in a little cage which I've got, put them on the other charger which I've got, or now this one of course, uh, and then see, uh, and then I'll try and match the cells as close as I can before I go and solder them up. So yeah, that's a nice little feature. Uh, we can also get an overview of the uh, current temperature of the device, uh, its input uh, its, uh, voltage range in there, uh, and the, the amount of power which it's using as well. And we can see that with this charger actually has a rating of up to 200 watts, Charging this 3S cell is literally down at 30 odd watts. It's uh, not a lot at all. So I'll tell you what, let's stop this one. It's one of those menu buttons which you're just going to have to get used to. <laughs> right. That's basically all you need to know to get yourself on the flight line and get yourself uh, the LiPo pack, which will lie on or whichever cell kept chemistry you want to be charged is that if you've got a donor battery which you can use to charge maybe you're taking a 12 volt lead acid, lead acid battery to the to the flight and what by whatever means is that's basically what you need to know to get yourself going literally just go in there choose your current setting hit start and then it goes and for me it's the smallest of features it's the, it's that bar at the top that's really really cool for me and also once this charger is finished, it's going to beep at you. And the other nice thing I like about the ISD chargers is that they're not like the other chargers which I've got here. This one will continue to beep at you, or at least the former one does. It will just continue to beep at you uh, and then you know that the charger is finished. It's really, really handy because you may have wandered off and left it charged on the desk. Uh, and then you know that it's been incompleted. Uh, also, this screen is likely to turn blue to show that it's been incompleted as well. So as we can see, that battery has finished charging. A nice clear indication on that. Actually, it's green, not blue. Uh, and we can see that the battery cell is finished. It did just chirp, chirp at me. That's the notification which I like. So we can now see that this battery is now charged. It was green for a moment when it finished charging uh, and now it has been inflicted to blue. It will chirp at us as well. It chirped at me a few moments ago. Uh, once, well, there we go. Once it's finished and now that's the second time it's been chirped at me uh, to let me know or let you know that the charger has been finished. So with that said, let's get ourselves zoomed back out. That, now the curiosity here is not necessarily how useful a charger like this is on the flight line because me and you both know that something like this and I know from first hand experience. So to wrap up here, she's been here for a week. I've used her to charge. I haven't used her to discharge or storage charge because I don't normally do that. I did try out that destroy function. Just a special note on the destroy function, the battery which I tested that out upon. It did take about 40 minutes to drive it into the ground at the one amp setting, which is the max setting for this device. And it did get all the way down to zero volts. However, LiPo batteries being LiPo batteries, I did test it yesterday and it had sprung back one of the cells to 2.4 volts or something like that, which is absolutely hilarious. So it doesn't matter if you try and drain them into the ground, LiPo cells do have a nasty habit of springing their voltages back. You gotta love them for that, uh, especially when you don't want them to do that. Anyway, I'm going off topic. This is an ideal replacement charger for, like I said, the original one which I had from ISD, I bought from ISDT. 
and it has been absolutely fantastic. But you can't get that one anymore. So an ideal alternative for a field or even desk charger uh, is this little Q6. And, the, and I'm gonna state it again, that's exactly the reason why I went to Banggood and asked for this one specifically, because if that one there had broken, this is the one which I would have chosen as a direct replacement. So look out for this one being used at the Funny Farm uh, or around about in my office over the next couple of months because I intend to keep it around because it has been super useful, especially for the wide variety of batteries which I'm charging up at the moment. So yeah, genuinely impressed with it. Like I said, this is the one which I would have purchased if that one there had died. I don't think I can give it a better rating than that. For me, the, it's the one key thing. It's not any of the fancy features. I just want it for charge, but it's the annoying beep. That one does my absolute tree in. This one also does my tree in, and I'm sure you've seen us at the funny farm, and in the background, there's something going beep, 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 beep. Yeah, it's that. It'll be this one next time. <laughs> On that note, for myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench, and I'll see you again shortly. Cheerios!